Hey guys, welcome back to the 13th episode of the Train Simulator series. Uh, we are part, at part 11 of building the Quaker Town in Southern Rail, Railroad, Railway, I say Railroad, either way. And we're working between Perkesy and Quaker Town once again, filling out some of the scenery, filling out some of the roads, filling out just quite a fair bit we're trying, doing a little bit of everything we're doing some water work we're doing some planting we're doing some road work um about the only thing we aren't doing is some building placement but who knows i been a while since i recorded some of this footage so it may be appearing um as per usual however all the updates all the work you're seeing in this update is currently live with the root on steam workshop thank you to the 250 unique visitors to the route on Steam Workshop. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you especially to the 54 current subscribers to the route as well as the eight who have favorited the route. It is an extreme honor to, that that many people have viewed this route and viewed my work and I can only hope to make the route better for all of you and that you continue to enjoy it. Um, as mentioned last week, or last, not last week, but last episode, roughly about two weeks ago at this point, I did have to add a, another route to the requirements. However, I'm as always, I'm still looking into reducing the amount of routes that are required for this custom route. So hopefully I'll be able to update you in the coming weeks, coming months on any adjustments in that. But again, we did have to add Steven, Steven's Pass as mentioned in the last update. Um, you see right here, kind of adding some roads. Um, you're going to see me kind of take a pause here real quick and basically just kind of taking a break. Um, that leads me on to another recommendation that I can make to you, to you guys. Don't be afraid to take breaks when route building. Um, you're not supposed to be superhuman. Please get up, get a drink of water, get a snack. You know, don't just sit and route build for multiple hours on end with no rest, no snacks, no drinks. It's not healthy. Get up, stretch your legs, move around, get the blood flowing, get a snack, get something to eat, etc. Um, another thing I want you guys to be on the lookout for is if you notice here, I'm trying to get the roads to line up again and meet up. Well, the problem is the with the road splines, getting them to line up they'll go to the right location but they won't go to the right elevation if it's on an angle whereas the track splines usually do depending on circumstance and so you see me there just trying to get it as close as I can um, it shouldn't be a big of a problem because one thing I'm probably gonna minimize on this route is the is the traffic overlays um, and this road in particular probably won't have one but if you do, it's just something to be on the lookout for, something to be cognizant of, aware of, if you're doing your own kind of route. Now, I did say we're kind of going between Perkesy and Quakertown today. So up here, you're actually seeing a bit of a clearing by the quarry, just north of Perkesy Tunnel, um, north of the airport, um, but not quite to the Quakertown area. It's by the old quarry, or at least what I believe to use, used to be a quarry, at least it looks that way. And there's kind of this nice little clearing, almost as if there's power lines there. I don't think there actually is. I think it's just a clearing. Um, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. And you're going to see me use basically a lot of the tools that you've become accustomed to me using um, between roads and terrain smoothing, as well as the asset block irregular tool. Again, I'm sounding like a broken record at this point. That is basically my favorite tool out of all the train simulator tools. So just, again, be, be aware, you're gonna see some more of that. Um, be, and just be aware, if you're building your own route, um, I would love using that tool. Um, if you were to place all these assets individually in these locations, one, it would take a lot of time, and two, it would be a much bigger performance hit than simply using the irregular asset block tool. And I believe that's how I'm getting away with a playable frame rate um, of at least 30 FPS, if not more in some areas, with even with all these 3D trees. So I actually believe that's helping me in that aspect. Um, I don't know how this would really run with a kind of a lower end setup. I hope it runs okay, because again, I want the, this route to be playable by as many people as possible. 
Um, but I need also need to keep that in mind because I myself, I have a Threadripper system, I have a GTX 1070. It's not the highest end computer in the world, but it's still a pretty high end system, even in this day and age. So when you're rebuilding on your own, don't be afraid of the irregular asset block tool. Don't be afraid of 3D trees, but also be aware that lower end systems may not be able to handle it. So um, some of these trees may not stay the way they are. I may swap them out for 2D ones, but for right now they are 3D ones. Just again, getting that feel, getting that foresty feel, that that wooded feel that a lot of these um, areas have. You also notice I hit the randomized button there quite a few times. That's to randomize the orientation and location of these trees and to kind of flush out um, where I want it to be and where it matches up best and what kind of fills out the scene the best and things of that nature. You also see me kind of filling in some of the gaps where that's a little bit more further away from the track because while the player is going to be largely near the track running the train, um, a lot of people are going to want to do like photo run bys or just kind of get a bird's eye view of the, of the track and as they're operating so you need to at least f be willing to fill out the scenery for a decent distance and i'm probably going to fill out a lot more as time goes on again this is a definitely a long-term project but that's another thing to be aware of is how far out are you going to fill out the scenery and i'm i'm probably going to be filling out i'm going to say i don't want to give a definitive distance i want to say between a half mile to a mile either side of the track but i don't want to give a definitive diff diff um, distance because I know it's going to change depending on the area like if it's in a town like if it's downtown Lansdale obviously I'm going to have to fill that out a little bit more um, purely because of it being a town but also because of the septa line that goes off to Doylestown and down to Philly I need to fill that out as well as well as the Sandy Creek branch so I'm going to have to kind of balance out that distance and it's not like a hard set distance it's just an idea distance if that makes sense um, again also you see me using that irregular asset tool I getting those curves is it just helps a ton um, you're also going to see me working with the irregular asset tool here at the airport um, but I'm not entirely sure of the name of this airport offhand I did know it um, may add it in a comment may add it in an overlay I don't know yet but um, this is the airport that is north of Percasey and it's basically the reason I'm having the scene in here because yes I'm re I'm putting in the irregular asset I'm putting in a lot of grass but I put this scene in here because I've actually flushed out the airport a little bit more it used to just be the runway um, I've adjusted the runway I put in the taxiway um, at least the primary taxiway it's not completely done yet but it's a lot more filled out than it was so this actually might be a really cool scene for you to check out on uh, in the most recent update. In fact, just again a reminder because I know we've been going for a little bit here. All all the updates you are seeing in this video are visible right now on the route. They went live the night before this video was posted. So just kind of keep that in mind. And again, you just you see how this is kind of filling out. It's a little hard to tell with the Google Maps overlay, but you see how it's kind of filling out. And again, we're going back to roads. This is actually in an area by Quakertown. Um, one thing I am considering, and you'll kind of see it in this area, this area is across from the Univest Performance Center. Um, it's across the tracks from it. It's this small little residential area. I'm considering trying to add a larger engine terminal um, in a wooded area that is technically owned by the borough um, in this area. I don't think I'm going to do it yet. I haven't just fully decided, but um, one thing I need to be cognizant of is, okay, what, if, what what this is basically what would happen in real life. Well, in real life, those in a residential area don't want heavy machinery being worked on or started near where they live. It's just not ideal. Now, there's a bunch of trees and everything, but it's also, okay, even though there's a bunch of trees blocking the noise, you have to be aware of, okay, just because there's trees blocking the noise and you may have that solved, the busyness of the roads becomes an issue. The access becomes an issue. You're Just because something is great in theory and you would love to put 
something there because it would be ideal and don't get me wrong it would be ideal there but you also have to be aware of okay in real life would it actually be put there um because again it's not property owned by the railroad you would have to buy the property and things of that nature now if you're doing a freelance route go ahead do whatever you want this is just something i need to be aware of because this route is based off of real life based off of a real life scenario so I have to be aware, I, I'm thinking about these things as I'm building the route. And if you're going for a scenario like that, I would encourage that. So again, we're just kind of adjusting some of the water this time around here, making it a little more realistic, flushing it out. But as we wrap up here, because we are coming to the end, if you liked what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the route on Steam Workshop. Check it out in Train Simulator. Check out Train Simulator, which I think was on the humble bone for a buck. Thank you for watching. And I hope you guys have a great Halloween and see you next time.